Good morning, everyone, and welcome to this NOTEX seminar. Um, one in a long row, and upon request, today we're going to talk about um, data management and versioning uh, in um, production and process. And with me today, I have uh, Thomas Hörauf, which is a key player in our supplier of VACI that are producing the product version dog, which is an excellent product to do all this data management. If you please unmute Thomas um, and uh, we can start off. Uh, I think that that's why we can't hear you. Yeah, good morning. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> yeah, good morning, Thomas. Good morning. Thank you so, for the introduction. Yeah, no problem. I just going to tell frankly before I hand it over to you so you can actually start sharing your screen. Uh, so this is a Teams live event, which means that you can only ask questions in the Q&A section and we will moderate those uh, after the uh, presentation and demo that Thomas is just is going to start to begin to do shortly. Um, and we and you're live now. We see your PowerPoint. That's uh, great. <laughs> so it looks uh, like it's working. Yeah, yeah. So it's 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 not in the presentation mode yet, but just yes, so you know. Yeah, I tried to switch. Uh, takes a little time here currently. Uh, Maybe, uh, yeah, oh, it looks like it's working. Oh, now it's looking great. Super. Thank you. Perfect. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I thought it's a good idea to give you with um, some short PowerPoint slides an overview about company and the product. But the, the larger part will be the product itself, which I will demonstrate in a live session. And I keep time for questions and answers, so um, feel free to, um, to to write down your questions or type it into the chat so that we can answer all the arising questions. Awesi, that is the company name. It's a short form for automated versioning system. This is what we do where we focus on and where we developed our product version doc. It comes from versioning and um, has to do with uh, uh, looking what is different, comparing documents, and I try to switch to the next screen here, but it looks like it's not working. Give me just a second. Yeah, so here you see the company. Here are some numbers. We are 13 years on the market, close to 100 employees. So we are the largest group in that in this segment, uh, large, three times larger than the next competitor have done so far 1,300 plant installations and uh, we are active in over 40 countries directly or we are partners like Novotech. Novotech is responsible for version dock in Scandinavia and Benelux. And just a rough number for you, every night we uh, back up around about 1 million uh, sorry, devices. Sorry, Thomas, Thomas yeah. just want to mention one quick thing. And yeah. it's also UK and Ireland, right? Ah! Apologize, absolutely right. It's also you. <laughs> and, uh, and by the way, right, the last know, ones who uh, joined the, co yeah. the community. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and I forgot that. <laughs> Apologize. Yes, it's right. So a lot of countries managed by Novotech, and it's a, I would say it's a success story. Uh, we have won a lot of customers. You are supported them in a very good way. And um, and we will see that version of is a, is a product which is really needed in in these times where devices are growing due to IoT and where the network is there available and so on. Yeah, here is an overview about some customers just to show you that it's branch neutral. So from the automotive over food, beverage, machine builders, um, pharmaceuticals, uh, steel, metal, all the branches are uh, using version dock. We have a global presence and again, as mentioned, Benelux, Scandinavia, Ireland, UK are uh, directly managed by Novotech, where we have a great relationship too. So why uh, is customer using version doc? Yeah, I have an example of Warsteiner. They um, use it for many, many years and they use version doc exactly to see what was changed when, where and why, and especially that they are able to control the suppliers and contractors because they visit the plant, they do modifications, they leave. And in the past, they didn't know what they changed. And sometimes a set point or a parameter was changed or maybe a downtime happened due to the change. And they were not aware of what they have to do to get back on production. 
So if you are not, they always see what the contract and supplier notified and they are always able to roll back and uh, get back and have control on the process at least. Yeah. This is always the goal. Also with internal people as well as with contractors. So now I try again to switch. Looks like we have a little bit of performance issue. But let me check here. Yeah, now it gets. So goal is to have always a clear overview who changed what, when, where and why. This is what Workshop automatically tracks and records. We do automatic backups. We compare the backup against the stored version. And this is what we get as a result that you always have control about the running code in your PLCs and automation devices. And in times of IoT, Internet of Things, there are more and more machines, more and more data coming. And it's now the next step and uh, to, to, yeah, to increase the automation level with version lock, with a data management solution, who takes care on the running code in all the devices, which is automatically backed up, which is stored, which is versioned when you do a change or a contract that is doing a change, they type in the change reason why they modified it. And then you have always a clear overview and transparency. Also, the cybersecurity theme is quite important. I will come back on that later because the more network you have, the more is the danger increasing that you get attacked. Yeah? So we need also to protect PLCs, robots, SCADA, not only the computers, the PC, also the automation devices. And how we manage that, I will show later as well. Why is that increasing? Yeah, you see over the years, it's more or less exploding and then you need to take care on that. Yeah, and introduce a data management system in your plant so that you get control on the whole process. With version doc, we also deliver what we call smart compares. Yeah? That makes it unique. That's the main difference to normal versioning systems, which you may know from the IT field, yeah? like SuerSafe, uh, Tortoise, Git. These are versioning tools, sometimes for free, downloadable but they only can compare ASCII and binary. At version doc, there we focus on automation devices. So all PLC brands, SCADA, robots, field devices are covered by version doc. So we understand the protocol, we understand the code of all these programs and can compare it. So you see then always the difference before and after the change or the difference in the backup in opposite to the stored version. All these things will be highlighted. So how does it work? We have here on the left the version doc server. That is, by the way, the only piece of software which you need to install because the clients are free of installation and license, so you can use them everywhere. And when you plan to modify now something, you check out here the current version on your programmable device. And there you can modify, you can add uh, source code or change parameters. Then you download these into your device, make the test if it's optimized, if the failure fix is done or whatever you wanted to do. And when this is running fine, yeah, then you create here locally your new version and you check it in back to the server. So then you type in your change reason, why you modified it, and then it's stored as new version with day and time and who did it on the version doc server. You get a nice report, you get the version history, and you always have an overview who changed what, when, where, and why. So now comes the next step, because we need to control if this stored version is always in line with the running code. Therefore, the version doc server can back up automatically over network all the devices, the SCADA system, the PLC, the robot, everything where software is running in. And when the backup is on the server, we compare automatically the backup against the stored version. And then if there is a difference, we give alarm, we send you an email, we send you a short message, we show it in the report line. So you will be immediately informed if there is a difference. So with this, I would say a security loop, you are always aware of with which software you are producing a product. It gives you a lot of security.
So you may ask you, yeah, but for which kind of devices is version doc uh, prepared? Where have our easy developed smart compares for? And here you have an extract. Yeah, here is uh, uh, a short overview. It's not all. Yeah, it would be too much to list all uh, devices, but here are the most important ones. Yeah? So you see on the left side here uh, all the, the PLC brands. Yeah, from Siemens, Rockwell, Schneider, GE, and so on. All they are supported. That means in backup as well as in detail compare so that you see in the code what is different. And we will see it now in the live session uh, as well. I will show the most important brands and, and compare them and uh, modify something. Also, we have compares developed for scatter systems. Quite often, these compares are not available from the vendors itself. Huh? So if you ask Siemens for a WinCC compare, it, you, you can't buy it, but in Workstock it's integrated. It's also valid for TIA, for Wonderware, for iFix, you know, for uh, Orchestra, all these here listed devices, Factor of View, and so on. Um, but also the field devices, uh, robots, uh, as well as documentation. Yeah, this is also a very important part. Yeah, so you do not only store the automation project, you also store a Word, an Excel, CID drawings, PDF files, whatever it is. And when you need to go locally, do a failure fix, then you can check out also the CAD drawing yeah, to analyze to have every documentation with you directly in the in the production area so that you can analyze. So then the, all the time we have also added further things. Yeah, um, currently we have um, also apps available for uh, for Apple OS as well as for Android systems. So that you can, for example, scan a QR code on a machine and get immediately the information. Has the backup done? Are there differences? How's the cycle time, memory usage? Um, is, are there forcing values active? Uh, how many versions have been done? Are there differences? Is everything fine or not? So you directly get a live overview directly in front of the machine if you want to. So summarizing your benefits by using version doc, yeah, you reduce costs. Yeah, there is um, the possibility to, yeah, to, uh, to avoid downtimes. Yeah, because we also check uh, set points, parameter changes, yeah, not only code changes. Um, for sure, you get an uh, improved efficiency you know, when you do commissioning, because especially in commissioning phases, version doc uh, get you a clear overview and right? you know what is modified by whom. Uh, it's, is it the external supplier or is it internal maintenance people already? Then also the quality, as already mentioned, yeah, if there are important uh, set points and parameters which you need to control, you can do that. Because for a device, you could define two backup jobs. Yeah? The first one maybe for the full backup for disaster recovery. But the second one maybe to control set points and parameters in a maybe higher frequency every half an hour, not only once per day. Yeah. And with that, uh, of course, you get more safety, more security, yeah, and always find the right data you are looking for because version lock is then the central place where all data is available, all the versions, all the backups, everything. Yeah. We have um, also, let me talk a little bit about Internet of Things, Industry 4.0. Uh, there is, and I can, maybe I can jump here also in the Internet, I have opened it here. Uh, if you go to IoT One, they analyzed in 2019 over 2000 companies and built from that analyze a top 500 index. And I'm proud to say that we are listed here on place 75 because we do a lot of research and development for cybersecurity as well. And you are aware of yeah, the computer, you can install McAfee Kaspersky yeah, to make a virus scan, but for the PLC, for the robot, there is no virus scanner available. And version of more or less is something like that because we can um, secure it and how that will work, I will, I will show you later. But as we are always in the internet here, let me also show you here one important page. Yeah. If you go to versdoc.info, there you can see beside the roadmap here, where you see which features are coming in the next version. You can also see on the device support a more detailed overview about all smart compares. Uh, so if you want to get more information later on, 
feel free to go there. There are also a lot of further information, uh, movies, um, introductions, and so on. And on the home page here at aweasy.com, you switch to English, and then you can see here is also a download possibility for a client, which you can use to play and which you can uh, use to do exactly what I will show you later by changing a PLC, uh, RS Logix, or an S7 or a GE PLC, and you can play with it. Good. Some last slices about cybersecurity. Um, I think it's getting more and more important. Yeah, the devices are increasing, the data amount is increasing, everything is networked. So that makes it necessary to protect your plant and your devices. And looking back to the history, you can see it happens. Yeah? In 2010, it was the Stuxnet. In 16, it was the Remnant virus, yeah? Configure Warm. WannaCry in 2017, and here are the companies which were affected. Yeah, a lot of uh, large names, uh, huge names. 17, the uh, WannaCry, also affected uh, companies. So it's really time to focus also on that. And we have listed on our home page a story which we call a honeypot scenario. So if you look for honeypot, you will find it. And the honeypot is for us a network switch, yeah, which we place also in the in the production area and which we back up and control to detect uh, cyber attacks. So if a bind is a virus, let's play this game. Uh, then we have such a switch here in the whole network. And there are in all area switches, yeah, one for the assembly, one for the filling lines, so all behind these switches are areas, but we add one switch where no area is behind. So you need to spend one switch more. But this switch uh, version will back up every minute yeah, to get analyzed if there are ports open, if there is any change of a cyber attack. So this is our honeypot, what we say. So how does it look like in detail? Let's do an example here with a scan switch. And on our workshop.info website, you see all the all the switches which are supported. By the way, the, the classical switches uh, from Cisco and so on are also supported, but not listed. We have many listed their automation switches from Rockwell, Siemens, and so on. But the normal switches, of course, are also supported. So what, will, what do we do? Yeah, this switch here is our honeypot. We control the configuration, we control the firmware, and we back it up regularly every minute. Yeah? So compare, and if it's equal, then everything is fine. Yeah? Nothing is changed. But if a cyber attack happens, and that was always the case with uh, Stuxnet, with WannaCry, they first attack the switches, try to open ports, ping the PLCs, and when they have enough positive pings, then came the main attack hours later. So this preparation of a main attack is our chance to detect such an attack. Yeah? That means the virus will, will change the configuration, open the port, yeah? we back up the next minute the configuration, we check it, we identify, oh, there is a modification, we give alarm, and in that moment you get it by mail, by short message, and you are informed that now a cyber attack is ongoing, or let's say at least a port is open. Yeah? And as there is no machine behind with that honeypot switch, and nobody had to do something anyway, that is really the, the identification of a cyber attack. Yeah? So at that moment, you can hang up or switch off the, net, the internet from the company, yeah? uh, check out from the workshop server all not affected versions, restore these devices where we have detected already differences, and go back in a, in a safe mode. And if you are fast enough, you have protected your PLC, your process. Yeah? If you have nothing in place, yeah, then you will recognize it when the PLC is already modified and the cyber attack was already successful. And please keep in mind, if you are the company which has, or which is the goal for the attack and nobody else, also in these cases, Kaspersky and Effie wouldn't uh, be able to help you because you are the main attack. You will be the first in the globe who is attacked. Yeah? So Kaspersky and Effie can only put develop a protection if it happened already somewhere in the world world and if it was reported to them uh, in that case they can protect it and develop something but if you are the first one if you have a critical infrastructure energy water whatever it is nuclear then it's important that you think like you're the first one uh, like there is a person who want to attack only you 
And in these cases, it's important to have these kind of security systems in place. Okay, that should be enough with PowerPointing. Um, let's start here with the, with the live demo. And I have prepared here a VMware image where I have version doc installed. And you see here the version doc clients. All of them are free of installation and you can use them on every computer in your company if you want. So they are quite flexible. We not that that they are free of installation means we do not write in the Windows registry. Huh? That is the, the technical reason behind. So we will not disturb any other system. You log in, yeah, you type in your username. You type in your password. Both can be synchronized and binded to the domain, to the Active Directory, so that you use your Windows login if you want. Then you can connect here to the server or log into the client. And um, then you have a, an overview here. Uh, you see what kind of devices are there available. Um, you see also here in the log state who is working on which device. Uh, here, for example, I see this was handed out to a supplier. This kind of status means you can work in the same time during Copa Glass. I handed it out. You can also do your feature fixes on daily base. But here, this log sign means this is exclusively in use you know, until 12 p.m. So you're not able to do there any change because it's locked and exclusively in use. So with that, you can coordinate the team. You always see who is working on a project. You have here a nice search engine. Yeah, you could search here for, let's say, RS Logics, and then you can jump here from project to project, or you filter for it, and then you can go there directly and say, okay, this one I want to modify. The first step is always to check it out. That means you copy it from the server to your local client. Here you see, yeah, locally it's not present. On the server, I have 73 versions. So the first thing is yeah, to, to actualize your client. Doing that, it gets colored. Yeah? That means um, you have then here in the colored mode, in a nice view, you see what is locally on my client here available and if it's equal. You see the project itself. We demonstrate it always like it's shown in the in the editors of the vendor. Uh, so here, like it's shown in the Logics editor. The next step after checkout is yeah, to hand it over to Logics. Yeah? So you mark it and then you hand it over. The version client looks in the registry if there is an editor available and hand it over automatically. And then you can directly start modifying it. So with that automatism, you can't open the wrong project. That is one part of security, but it would also work if you do it here over the starts menu. That's, there's no difference. So then I go here into the project. Then I do here maybe a modification. I add here the next step. So this one, save, maybe another one. We go here to a SQL function chart. And let's say, ah, maybe these steps are not needed anymore. I do delete them. And switch this and save. I don't need to write down what I did uh, because now when I uh, close it here, I have here with the third step my smart compare. Uh, and you see it's already a pen, that means it's already modified. Here is the day and time when it's happened. And if I want to know what was modified, then I can click here on create new version. And this smart compare, that is now working without the need of the installed editor. Yeah? So if you want to compare across the full history, marking any version, compare against any other or against a modified project in the working folder, Therefore, you don't need the editor. That is the good thing at the highlight of version doc. And now here we see, yeah, we have here added in that uh, in that uh, win one um, a further function. Yeah, version 73 was the current one, and the new version will be 74. And there you see it. Then also, what did we do? Yeah, we have uh, modified here the chart. As yeah, you see, this was there. I deleted it, so it's gone. And now I need to create my new version. I type in here maybe a change request. 
with the number and for each detail I can leave there a comment yeah, that were maybe a product change. And here this one that may be uh, an optimization. Okay. So if I'm not connected with the server, maybe I'm locally in the production, then I can create locally on my programming device already the version. Let's do that. Or if you're connected, you can directly check it in. Let's create it locally. And then you see it's now created version 74. Here, day, time, who did it? And you see it's here locally created, not on the server yet. But if you want to check it in, then it's moved and to the server and will be actualized, the version history. And you can see this version history always when you uh, look here to the report. Yeah, then you get a full overview. So for this Aerologix project, we have here uh, 74 versions. You can zoom in here, you see when, which time, who, on which computer I'm working here on the VMware image, here's my change request. So you can go here through all the versions and after version one, yeah, we have a dedicated page for each version again and you see what was here different, uh, what was exactly, uh, what was um, modified and your, your comments are here listed. Then. Good, but at any time you can uh, compare again with the previous or with any other version. And the nice thing is, look, if for example version 60 was developed with an old Aeros Logics editor, you still can compare against the current or any other one. Yeah? So this compare on the fly is independent from the editor version and works here as explained. Yeah? You can also print out these things in detail and have here a nice overview version 60 to version 74 and here are the differences. So Workshop is a powerful tool. These smart compares contains a very high value. In, in, and here you see we have made them available also as free compare. So whatever you want to analyze, you can go there and say, OK, I have now an iFix system or I have a machine edition project. You have one on a USB stick from your supplier, or one locally which you handed out. You start compare and you can directly start a nice project discussion with your supplier. If you want to do something new, then you go here to edit. You create your, your folder. Today we are at Novotech. There we have, let's say, a new, new production line. And then we add a component. So you follow these steps. There you see all the installed smart compares. Let's scroll down here and let's do an example for Siemens. Let's go here to PLC, 10 S7. Let's rename it as Mixer 1. Say OK, let's create that. And this is something you have to do only once. And now I show you how to add a project. You open the file manager, just follow always these instructions. Here is an S7400 project. I can drop the whole project folder there, the icon. That's it. And then we can create our base version. Base version is the first version. And check in this structure, Novotech line one, into the server. That's it. So from now on, I have already created my version number one. And if I do now modifications, I would start here exactly that process from checkout until check in, as I have demonstrated it with Eras Logics. But now let's say we want to define also a backup because backup is a very important part of version log. So here I have an S7, a soft S7, which I can start so that I can show you a real S7 backup. Look on my time, I'm still in time, it's good. So let's run, let's start. And then you go to the administration client of version log. Log in. Then you go to the area of jobs, backup jobs. Yeah. Let's go there and define a backup. You do the check in. We have this project already on the server available. 
So we go here in the cell archive to Novatech, new line one, mixer one, drag and drop the PLC here to the right. Here you see it's an S7. Yeah, we can schedule the backup because it's on network. If it's a not network device, we would use our manual version of backup client. So it works also for not network devices. Here you can say, okay, I want to have a backup every, let's say, six hours. So each shift end, I want to check that everything is versioned and, and in line yeah, with the stored version on the server. I could also get here an email if there are differences detected, then I would be informed from the server. And all I need to do is here to type in the IP address 127.001 in my case. I can also scan out and check if I get a response already. And Aweezy has also a network scanner uh, in development, so we would then scan in the network and identify automatically which device it is, which kind of PLC brand. We create the component, we create already the backup job. So it's a kind of commissioning tool what we have in the future. So now I have added here the, the PLC and now I can start it manually, but normally it would run every six hours now, periodically in the future. So here you see it starts, yeah, it will address the IP address and then it copy now first all blocks from the PLC to my server. And in case of S7, I opened here, prepared a document for you because I need to explain a little bit. We, we do not just take the online project because that has no symbols and commands. So this is a disadvantage at Siemens. So to assist you, what we do is we also take a copy of the latest version, which includes symbols and commands. Then we do our smart compare, the detail compare. And if there is new content, let's say from a supplier, a contractor modified something, then we migrate this change into the copy of the last version. We merge it there. We synchronize symbols to the old places, so you have as version of S7 backups still a documented offline project. Yeah? This is very important to highlight. Good. Going back to our process, uh, it's still running here. Yeah, it's finished. Inserting the result into the database, and here you see, oh, we have differences. Uh, then you can see, oh, what is different between backup and version? Because normally it should be in line. And then you see directly on this right side is the PLC code, the backup, and here is the version which we created. Then you can go here through each difference yeah, and have a look if it's important or not, if you have to, to act or what, what, what it is. If it's a supplier change, maybe Siemens is on site and do modifications, then you could say, okay, I create out of this backup a new version, and this will get in version number two, and you are then again in line with the device. This is how it works. Good. We have here a report client where you see all these things which happened as well. It gives you a nice overview. So in the report client, you can see which device was added, where the pre-shift has created new components or new versions. So here the check-in area, you see we added here our Mixer 1 PLC. We created new versions uh, here for our AirLogix and for the Mixer 1. Um, we checked out and locked here also here uh, devices. Uh, this is what I did before I prepared uh, the presentation today. I did that. We see here in the backup, there is one case where the server version of the backup is different. Oops, that is something you should be aware of and have a look what is going on there. Also here you can compare and see exactly these differences which we have seen in the admin client. But of course, you want to see it here in the report as well. And all these reports you can save and load. Uh, so when you come in the morning, you look, oh, which new version has the bridge shift done? Yeah, which device they had to work on? Then you get an overview. Or if you want to know where are backups different to the version, because these are the most important cases, yeah, then you see it and you can have a look what it is. Yeah. So this report client gives you a nice overview. If you close it, it will run there in the background. And if now a backup fails or shows differences or a new version is checked in there, pop up in a small window and inform you live what is going on in your plant. This kind of report, we also moved to a web client. And by the way, all these clients will be then in the web also available in the future. 
So you have the free choice of using a client over the web. Then here you type also in your name and your password. Again, both can be the same like your Windows login. And then you see here in the web um, project overview uh, about everything here, you see that we added that uh, um, project and we created already a new version for it. We can also go here to the backup jobs and have a look on the backup jobs. There we will find also our PLC, which we added. So here you can see uh, the PLC, which we added here. Here it is. Uh, so there was differences. Uh, then we see in which area the differences are detected. In the next version, we will show the detailed differences in the web here as well. So that would work on your, on your smartphone. It would work on the tablet. So you can be in the production area and see directly what is going on or on your office computer. And here also in the jobs, you can get a statistic. Uh, you see then um, is everything green, uh, then everything is fine. Blue are differences, red would be errors, backup didn't work and so on. And you see also over the history, if you're getting better or worse, again, green should be up, everything other colors should be down. But we do not also, not only the backups, we also look into the backups and make further analysis and read the device status. Yeah? And this is what we called factory floor status, device status. Yeah? So for field devices, I have an example for SEV uh, device, field device, also an example for S7. So if you go on such a device, then you see we look into the hardware configuration. Yeah? We see the Siemens MLFP number. We read out the serial number of the, of the plugged in communication processor. We look which firmware was running there. And we list all the attributes which are coming out of the hardware configuration and also create for you a monitor system so that you see how old is the backup. Did it show differences? In this case, yes. It's a current backup, yeah, no zero days old. The cycle time doesn't exceed 500 milliseconds. There are no forcing values active. Yeah, the RAM usage is fine. The buffer battery is okay, still loaded. And there are no error displays on the CPU and so on and so on. So depends on the device. We look to the device status and let you notice here also in the web client. Great. So a lot of functionality, a lot of data which you as of today are not, uh, uh, you not get that easy uh, with WordDoc. Everything is in a common in a common database and available for you. But it's not that complicated. And to show you that, we have also developed an easy client. So if you go to the easy client, then we um, don't need to train the people. Huh? But that's just like we modify something that when I create a version that I move it to the server and that I delete locally. So here, for example, I could look for a book list. And there it is. Yeah, here we are. And there you see this is an Excel sheet and it's locally not present. So all the complicated functions, yeah, the written tool by everything is gone. Just one button is there, the checkout button. Yeah? So we guide you through the process to check it out. Then it will get equal server to your local client. And as it is now equal, it's locally available. Now we show the editor button. Now you can head it over to Excel. There we are. Here I can add H2O, let's say 15 liters. I added this in line six, save and close. Don't write down what you did because with the smart compare, uh, next button, you see what you modified. Here line six, you added H2O 15 liters. Great, you type in your change request. You type in a new element for a new product and then you're ready to go, create your local version. And if you're back on network, uh, then of course you can move it to the server. There's the check-in button, let's do it. And then you start from the beginning. So this easy process from checkout until check-in, you have seen you will be guided through the process. There's absolutely nothing complicated. So everybody could work with version doc and there is nothing which would, yeah, be guilty that they say no it's too complicated no it's not 
Good. So we have seen the easy client. We have seen the normal user client. We have also seen the reports and the admin client. Let me go to another image, and then it's the, then I come to question and answers. Here in my other image, I have a little bit more examples. Yeah? For example, here, a SCADA system, yeah? so that you can see uh, if I compare with the previous version here, for example, uh, then we can, or oh, let me let me mark here version one, and then one, one, five, two, one. Then I have a little bit more here to see. So there is a lot of things which, which will be read it and where you can see uh, alarm configuration or network stuff, security stuff, SQL stuff, uh, tags, uh, windows, whatever it is. Um, the same here, if you have uh, a prophecy, uh, GE PLC, uh, then you can also here compare with previous one yeah, and go here from difference to difference uh, to see what, what was modified. It's always the same how we present it. Yeah? So it's um, here the icons of uh, GE prophecy and here are the detail compares and here you can also print it out and, and, and analyze it, send it by mail, whatever you want to do or delegate changes. We have it also for documentation like CAD drawings. Yeah? Here's an example for a plan. Yeah? Then you see here, uh, let me go here to a thing which makes sense. This for example. There you can zoom in and we highlight for you uh, here the differences yeah, here if it's the text or if it's the graphic, you see it. With our new A-Plan connector, we can also back up these devices and check if the reality fits to the plan. This is what you, which will be available this year, uh, E-Plan connector. Have a look on our roadmap. This is a hot feature, hot stuff. Um, yeah, maybe for some we have uh, TIA things, yeah, also the same, yeah. In TIA it looks like this, yeah, also the same, but here with the TIA icons, as well as, for example, in other scatter like WinCC or WinCC Flexible, yeah. then you see it like this, yeah. here graphic. We show exactly in the window palletizer the graphic object IO field one was moved in this position, these pixels have been changed. Yeah? Or we show you in the tags uh, that the tag was added, which was not there before. The alarming uh, maybe was different. Or in the script is have been made a change, so you always get in detail this information. So now after uh, exactly 40 minutes, you have seen that version of is really quite powerful. We have developed a lot of smart compares. And by the way, these smart compares are not all done by our own. We have now developed a toolkit which we hand out to our um, yeah, uh, hardware vendors because we get more and more requests. They ask us in the meantime, how can we get version compatible? How can our device, our field device, our PLC, how can this support a version of smart compare? And therefore, we give them out um, or hand them out a toolkit. They can develop it on their own with their device knowledge. We just do the quality test and make it then available in the download area for our customers. So you will see in the next years a kind of smart compare explosion, yeah, so that you get a lot of more smart compares than I already have shown here in the overview of the device uh, overview. Uh, then you will get it. Uh, here also for devices which are not, I would say, standard devices. Now we had in the past projects with, uh, well, let me give you some examples uh, here. The newest movie tools, for example, was done by Damon Cockness, camera stuff, barcode stuff, uh, Kistler stuff was done by them. Yeah, so all kind of devices will then be, be added, not just the standard PLCs and SCADA, also more and more field devices and uh, uh, screw up systems and all this kind of things. Good, before I bore you, Tobias, maybe we open the part of questions and answers. Great, thank you very, very much. It was an excellent presentation, I have to say. Um, and we have really actually have a full set of questions for you now, Thomas. Hey, good. So uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. So you can start with uh, the, uh, we actually got a question on Windows XP. Uh, yeah. Does version dot run on that? Maybe you can elaborate on which operating systems that you support. Yeah. 
Yeah, that's a good question. Uh, current uh, XP is, is uh, discontinued from Microsoft, but you have seen if you if you took care, yeah, one of my machine of my EVM image here was was still on XP. Yeah, this one here. This stuff. I use it still because I have old editors running only on XP. That's the reason why I use it. So the answer is yes, we support XP and we'll do it in the future. Um, we have a Later on, we will have a special client uh, for XP, which will be there available. We go also back to NT. Ah, oh, sorry, I think I don't share currently. One moment. I missed to do that. So um, now I think you can see it, right? In a second. Yes, now. Yeah, OK. So this image here, which I had at the first, that was XP. Yeah? But you can see here, in the version doc info, if you go here to using version doc, there's the hardware and software requirements, yeah, and there you see uh, what we use. We have, by the way, also for Windows NT still a solution, as well as we have here for XP until, of course, the newest system, uh, the full support. Okay. Super. Uh, next question. Uh, when will S7 backup work uh, with TF 1500 PLC in version dog? Very specific question. I, I don't know if, if, if that is. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, currently we use the, the API from uh, TIA to get all the data, and this is the bottleneck, to be honest. So it's not uh, the fault of uh, our ways in not getting data, maybe. But we um, we have an, uh, a development project with Siemens. I hope until end of this year we will support here natively, like we support S7, because at S7 we don't need the editor. Yeah? If you go currently there to the TIA system, there you will see at uh, TIA. Let me check where it is. There it is. There you see that we still use it currently. Yeah? That has to do with the export module of TIA, uh, the openness interface. We will get rid of that. We will hopefully be end of the year. We will analyze TIA as we do it with S7. And in that moment, we are independent of TIA. And then you will all get what you want, what you are looking for. Yeah? So, but currently, if you still use it, you see it. Yeah, it still is already supported. Yeah, the 1500, by the way. Um, but it depends really on the version of TIA you're using here. Yeah? Now, uh, we also su already support version 16. It's missing here currently. But you will see it here in the roadmap. Da, 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 da. We switch to 64 bit compared, and it's faster. And it also covers the version 16 of, uh, of TIA. Yeah? Super. Super. Um, okay. Next question is. Does the client uh, support single sign-on, so it automatically logs in? Yes, we do support that, yes. Great. Uh, next question is about storage. Um, the version dog server, where does the project getting stored? Is that a local computer or a cloud storage, or what's, what's the possibilities? Yeah. There we are fully flexible, to be honest. We have customers who store it on the version doc server itself. We have customers who store it in a network drive, which is already redundant and fire safe. We have huge cloud customers like Amazon, for example. They have one main cloud server in Europe in Luxembourg, connected all the logistics senders in Europe to that main cloud server. Uh, so the data storage is in in in, in the cloud, yeah, there locally and uh, not not locally in the logistics centers. Works perfect. Mm -hmm. The architecture of Workstock is supporting all of that. Super. The data storage itself, maybe that's also something I want to show to you um, with the example I created now with Novotech uh, PLC here on my. On my D drive, I have the data. Yeah, here you see the um, here you see the server graph. It's one main folder, and in this main folder you find all the data. Yeah, so here is my Novotech project. Here is the new line which I created. Here are the versions, and here are the backups. So we made one backup. You go there. You see here for the mixer one, we have one backup, and this is 
done today on the 5th May 2020. And here's the backup zip, and there is the SN400 project. So you may wondering, I didn't open a SQL Server or any database. Yeah? That, is, that is our strategy. Even without version, the users can get that data. So you, you should maybe give your, your users reading access to this main folder, to the server archive, so they could get that data at any time, even without version doc. But of course, only read access if you want. Yeah? Yeah. This is the way how we store it. And then the only limit is the disk space. Yeah? There is no, no limit in data or in the amount of devices. Uh, yeah, the largest application is managing uh, 100,000 devices. And uh, in relation of backups, we have servers running at Diana or at Amazon where we go from 20 to 30,000 devices per server. Excellent. Uh, actually, we, we now have also a question here about, which is a kind of the variation of the, of the other one. Uh, yeah. They are a system integrator and they usually have small systems on multiple sites and multiple customers. Could they use version dog centrally and check, check in, check out two sites or uh, does the server need to be on each site or each customer location? So it's, mm -hmm. it's, it's really seen out of a system integrated perspective. Yes, that's a good question. Thank you. Um, yeah, we have all kind of, of verities in this case. We have a machine builder who is able to, to connect to his customers remotely over a, a, a remote connection. Um, and they use a little private network. So Workshop is is dialing in yeah, and connecting to the customers, doing the backup and compare locally at home. That is one scenario. Mm -hmm. The other scenario is to place at the customer what we call small servers. We call that satellite servers. These mm -hmm. are can be small servers, maybe just for one PLC even. Yeah, mm -hmm. We have this on, on rig systems. We have this on, on small um, pump stations of water customers, uh, energy systems, stuff like that. And these satellite servers do locally the backup and compare and can synchronize then to the main server. So Workshop is the only product which has also synchronization on board, uh -huh. where you can configure what you want to synchronize. Maybe just the result, not the backup itself, because this data amount is huge, but the result is interesting. Then you just synchronize that result to your, to your headquarter, for example. And we have also commissioning servers for system integrators. So if they have a huge commissioning, they could use a small commissioning server on site to commissioning there. And when they are on the hotel at the evening, they sync to the headquarter or when it's commissioned, they take the server back and check all they have done to the main server in. Okay, great. Um, then we have a question which actually relates back to your cybersecurity uh, show in the beginning on the, on the presentation. And, and they are asking, how can you be sure that the attacker will hit upon the honeypot and not the one of the other switches? Yeah, that's a good question. That's, to be honest, it can also happen that they first attack another switch. These are, of course, also backed up and compared. In that moment, you would identify it later. But the history showed that they tried to attack all the switches, yeah? and then our honeypot is also affected. We can't back up all the switches every minute because then you would increase the traffic on the network a lot. Yeah. If you back up every device every minute, then it's not a good idea. That's the reason yeah. why we said, okay, let's take a honeypot and do this in high frequency. And the others, of course, we back up as well and compare, but maybe only hourly or once per day. Yeah? Then yeah. you identify the dead moment. Yeah. It's an important puzzle of security. Of course, it doesn't give you 100% security, but I would say I recommend it as a very important puzzle in the whole strategy you should have. Yeah? There are other um, other tools. I think Novotech is also selling it, which where you um, analyze the traffic itself on the network, if it's normal or getting unnormal with peaks. These are other, I would say, puzzles which you could add to your strategy as well. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, then we have two questions more. Uh, the first one is about time. Timing is shifting for version dog support to add our PLCs and specifically ABB Builder and Omron CX. 
It's yeah. working great for our out other 90 Siemens PLCs yeah. for more than a year. That's the yeah. question. Good, as a user. Great. So I'm yes. happy to hear that it works perfect only for Siemens. Um, yes, this is this question is very good because we have uh, it not yet for Omron, but I have a good good uh, message. We are going for Omron. Da, 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 da. Let me check here. Here it's coming. Huh? So the next version after 8.8 we release in yeah, here you will see in week 22 it's planned. And the next one here then in end of year, so October, November, we will have on one support. Uh, so that is that is something which will then be available. Yeah. Great. That's uh, the last brand we, we, we need to add. Go on. OK. Uh, I think the other one was ABB Builder. I don't know if that is PLC or if it's a SCADA system or anything. No, I, I know it's as I know it is also for PLCs, which are as I know also codices based. Uh -huh. Something maybe where the customer can come back to me, um, and I uh, sometimes we does just need to do a quality check to be honest, yeah, and make right. it available in in the ini file mm -hmm. that we do not deny the compare. Yeah? So there are hundreds of of. PLCs and systems which are called this is based and uh, we do only compare these ones which we have tested and agreed on on a quality test. Mm -hmm. So this workshop system looks into the into an Indian file and if this kind of code is based system is there listed, we compare. If not, we deny. <laughs> so, uh -huh. okay. Yeah, you know. And yep. um, but you can manage it on your own. Type in manually the device and then it works. That's also by the way valid for for standard compares where maybe a new version is out and we need still a month to develop it. You could do this already in the meantime, make it running. Uh, then just the new features will be ignored. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Got it, got it. Uh, the last question is actually someone out there that wanted to uh, wanted you to show more about how you do this with iFix. Uh, I don't know if that is it's a little bit limited time, Thomas. So yeah, maybe, yeah, may, well, maybe we could do we could do a video and go in detail for iFix, or we could um, agree on a dedicated iFix web session with this customer. No problem. Yeah. So so please now you see now you see a slide which is contains our emails and names. So please reach out to us and we will do a more dedicated thing on that. Um, because this is, of course, a little bit of an introduction and a very good one. So thank you, thank you very much, Thomas, for taking the time. And, right. every, and everybody out there, really appreciate you all taking the time to watch this. And if you have anything, comments, questions, just reach out to us. I will be sending out a survey. It takes ten, less than 10 seconds to answer, so please do that. And with that, uh, I just say thank you again and stay safe. And hopefully this whole situation with the coronavirus is blowing over slowly and we can all get back to normal. So thank you very much for today, folks. Thank you. Thank Bye. you. Stay healthy. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.